Do you like me? Just like me. Like Me TV Fresno on Facebook. Get the latest news, interact with others, watch videos, become a fan of me. Exclusively brought to you by Ventura TV. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition at Connect With Me here on the showroom floor at Ventura TV. On this Wednesday morning, you won't want to miss today's show. You'll want to call in at 436 Me TV Option 11. We've got a great show for you today talking about a local guy who is doing some good, spreading the good, spreading the good word throughout the community and working with underprivileged kids. Back with our show in just a moment. you call in today at 436 me tv option 11 and offer some of your thoughts and uh, maybe even some of your prayers for some of these kids that are going through some tough times right here in the city of fresno it's all over the city all over our state of course all over our nation and we've got somebody here in the studio today that's trying to make a difference with these young kids that are so much you know there's so much going on in the world today that can influence them one way or the other and so it's really an amazing story when you stop and th think about a young man who is in our studio today who played football at Fresno State went on to play in the National Football League the NFL unfortunately his career was cut short now he is the executive director of an organization who helps under privileged kids. What a great story. Let's go to the videotape. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about, my friends. Kevin Jordan was a lineman for the Bulldogs uh, before going on to play for the Green Bay Packers in the NFL, but his NFL stint lasted only a couple of years. He blew out his knee on the first day of training camp. Lost and not knowing what to do, Jordan had, well, not too many job skills. All he knew was football. But somehow he landed a gig at the probation department in the San Mateo County area, and it was from there that that idea of operating group homes for underprivileged kids was born. Now he operates six group homes in Fresno, Clovis, and Hanford that provide 24-hour care to at-risk teenagers who are part of the juvenile court system, part of social services. Many of these teams, keep in mind, are poorly educated. They lack social skills. They come from an environment of drugs and gangs and all the rest. Now, of the six group homes, two of them are for women. Four cater to young men. Live in our studio today, pleasure to have Kevin Jordan. He is the executive director of KYJO, a nonprofit 501c3 organization dedicating to helping these teens turn their life around, or at least for some of those that are on the fence, maybe go in the right direction. He's doing a good deed, and I want you to call in, ask him a question, or maybe offer your thoughts. 436 Me TV, option 11. Remember, turn down the sound. It's a good show here today on Connect With Me. Back in a moment. Frigidaire, it means the first electric refrigerator, the first compact electric range. Now, there's the Frigidaire Gallery Range with Symmetry Double Ovens. It's designed to cook multiple dishes at multiple temperatures, so you can prepare the entire meal at the same time. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. You know, I'm the first to admit I'm no expert. I'm a father of two, a 12-year-old, actually a 13-year-old, and a 10-year-old. And a I am no expert, and when kids are born, when, when, you know, a mother gives birth, the doctor doesn't come over and say, hey, uh, here's the manual on how to raise your kids. That just doesn't work that way. Everything is trial and error, and in this day and age, kids are influenced by so many different things. We have one person in the studio today who is making a gigantic difference. Call in at 436-MeTV, option 11, Kevin Jordan. It's good to meet you. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it very much. You're making a big difference in this community, and uh, you should be congratulated. You ought to be given the key to the city, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here to try. I'm just here to try. And, you know, not a key to the city, not a superhero, just one person that cares, you know, make, no, try to make a but, difference. But 
you didn't have to do this. You could have gone in another direction. You could have been an NFL analyst. You could have uh, done anything with your life. You're well educated. You're articulate. You're smart. Why this? Yeah, why this? You know, I really, I, uh, I ask myself that question every day, and it was just my heart was drawn to it. Uh, I actually had got my real estate appraiser's license as well, and was going to go ahead and work for myself and do that, but I didn't wasn't drawn to it every day. Yeah. And though, so once I got that stint working at the uh, probation department of San Mateo County, you know what? This is where my heart is. It's my <laughs> second passion. My first is Bulldog football, and then my second is uh, help with these kids, you know. And so that's why what I do with these kids now, when I combine them, they inspire each other. So I love it, what I do now. Oh, before I go further, as long as you mention Bulldog football, how's Derek Carr going to do in the NFL? Great. I think yeah. he's going to do great. You know, yeah. uh, he, he, he'll do great. You know, he did good at the combine, so I, I think he'll do great. A good career here at Fresno State. He's going to take that uh, with him in the NFL. Yeah, he'll take that bulldog pride with him, no doubt about it. How did so? How did you start the group homes? That that's the first. You have six of them now right. that you operate. How did how did you start? The, I mean, it's one thing to have the idea in your head, Kevin, but then how do you get the ball rolling? All right. So how I started, uh, I had a lot of friends that worked in group homes when I was here at Fresno. Uh, when I got done playing at uh, well, there at Green Bay, I went down to San Jose Sabercats and started playing a couple years. It was a teammate of mine that owned two group homes. So I had uh, went to his group home first in and saw how it was getting op uh, being operated. And there I was like, wow, I think I could do a little bit differently and do a little bit better. Uh, so from there, uh, my career got cut short. That's when I was done playing football altogether. So then I started working for the probation department. And once I started working for the probation department, I noticed that I really could relate to all these kids. The same problems that some of the other staff were having, I wasn't having. But guess what? It had to stop there at 8 o'clock. I mean, after your hour shift, you're, it's done. No more contact with the kids. So how can I be in more contact with kids and help them, get, promote them to be what they really want to be? So that's when I wanted to look, really to look into group homes. So I went to Fresno first to ask, can I have a group home here in Fresno? Yeah. They said, no, we have too many. We're saturated. Okay, so next county over, uh, Madera or Kings County. Uh, Madera, they said no. Kings County, they said yes. So, of course, I was wanted a boys' group home. Hanford? In Hanford, yes. Hanford's okay. Kings County. Yeah. So, of course, they wanted a boys' group home. Well, they said, we don't have a need for that. We have a need for girls. Ooh, okay. Girls. <laughs> but I said, why not? You know, at the time, I had two daughters. I can do it. I can do it. But guess what? Next thing, that was a challenge. Uh, CPS uh, opposed to probation. So the difference with that is, you know, probation, they have youth, they have things looming over their heads. If they mess up, they can go back to uh, juvenile hall. But CPS, nothing will happen. So a lot of people said for my first group home being girls, you know, with the different attitudes and things like that, <laughs> uh, and also at the highest, the, one of the higher levels, I wouldn't make it. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. And then I just took into uh, consideration what I saw at the other home to co prevent a walls, to prevent kids from wanting to do all these other things, give the kids what they want, a sense of home, a sense of, like, well, you really care. So Responsibility. I, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. This is your home. This is not just somewhere where you go and just doesn't want to, do, you don't want to just sit there. So what happened is that I purchased the home from the ground up. It was built, it was, it was halfway built, you know, with the housing market in, um, in disarray at the time. So purchased the home that was, uh, Half built, and then uh, it was a new home, two thousand two thousand square feet. Just and for this was what year? Two thousand six. Two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. Okay. Two thousand seven. How many girls went in initially? Um, my doors opened November seventeenth. I got licensed. My first place was November 29th. Uh, my second place was no, uh, December third. Uh, so it was only two girls for the year of two thousand seven. Then I got my third placement in January, uh, like the mid-January or so. And so after that, it was it was natural. It was not right. a, anything tough or anything. And all of a sudden, a year passed. I'm had at a full house, and then had an. What's a full house now? Uh, six or less. 
Girls? Mm -hmm. Six or less, yes. And boys? Well, no, this is just one house. It's okay. just one. One I house? One. I only have one house. Yeah, one, one house. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you run six of them. Now I have six, yes. Now you have six. Mm -hmm. But say, how many at, at one time would be in one home? Six. Six, six. okay. Six, six residents. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the girls and boys don't mix. It's just no. girls and just boys. Yes. Okay. No co-ed. What do you expect of them? What do you want them to do? I expect <laughs> them to, <laughs> what I want them to do, I want them to, uh, be able to leave the group home better off than they came in. A lot of people don't t uh, take that necessary approach to make sure they learn everything as far as uh, being able to make it in life, per se. They have to make, be able to make it in life and learn the tools they need necessary to make it in life after the, uh, after the group home. But they don't do that. And so one thing that I do uh, teach them, uh, just the things that we take for granted, how to wash clothes. You know, All right, I want to roll a piece of videotape. You may have seen this in the monologue. If you're just joining us, talking to Kevin Jordan, he runs six group homes for underprivileged kids. Let's roll that monologue uh, video right now because we didn't get a chance to see all of it. Of course, there you are playing uh, for Fresno State. Uh, we saw that, and of course, later on with the Green Bay Packers. But then the group homes, I mean, okay, once these kids, let's say I'm a kid, I go into the group home. There you are talking to some of the kids, and I'm sure they, they listen very intently uh, when you speak. What what kind of responsibilities do they have? Do they have to wash clothes? Do they have to cook? Do they have to clean house? All of the above what? It is very structured, yes. It is, uh, you, you wake up, say, uh, 5.30 a.m., and every uh, get ready for school, make up your bed, do your chores, your morning a.m. chores. Yeah. Uh, if, if they're on meds, they have to take their a.m. meds. Uh, get to school, do their school, uh, come back from school, then they have to do their study hour, snack, and do their p.m. Uh, programming. And also then do uh, PM chores, uh, clean up, uh, go to bed, same thing. So it's very structured, and they have to learn that uh, because a lot of them don't have structure, never had it before. So once they learn that structure, they understand what it takes to uh, live on their own, per se. Good morning. You're on Connect With Me. Your question, please. Is this a court-mandated thing? Is the only way to get into your pro guest's program is through a, through a court order or a judge's uh, uh, judge order uh, type of thing, or can I nominate my own kid? <laughs> <laughs> we we have had a couple of um, uh, private placements. Yes, uh, uh, these private placements have been from kids that the parents have adopted when they were small, and they started yeah. to you know the kids started to misbehave as they got older. So uh, the the adoption agency was able to place with us, but we do take private placements as well. Yes. You do. Mm -hmm. So it's not all court mandated. No, no, you can do private placements. Yeah. But it's just with the state uh, to get funding, you will have to be mandated per se by the court. For private placements, it's, you don't have to be any, any it's, no man, uh, man, it's not mandated. All right, we're talking with Kevin Jordan, and he's doing a good thing here in the city of Fresno. 436 Me TV Option 11. Call in, ask a question. He is the executive director of KYJO, a nonprofit organization helping uh, to help turn teens and turn their lives around uh, from where they're at at this point. 436 Me TV Option 11. We're back in just a moment. Adam 12, one Adam 12. This is Adam 12. It stars Martin Milner as Officer Pete Malloy, Kent McCord as Officer Jim Reed. One Adam 12, Roger. This black and white patrol car has an overhead valve V8 engine. It develops 325 horsepower at 4,800 RPM. It accelerates from zero to 60 in seven seconds. It has a top speed of 120 miles an hour. The automobile has two shotgun racks, one attached to the bottom portion of the front seat, one in the vehicle trunk. You want me to drive? Now on BTV Fresno, Xfinity 187. And we're back here. We'll take a phone call. Good morning. You're on Connect With Me. Your question? Hey, good, good morning. Good morning, John. Uh, Kevin, a couple of questions for you. Yes. Uh, is this, I might have missed it, but is this a private, I believe, funded, or does the government help you a little bit with yeah. the rent, the food, whatever is needed? Yes, it does. Yes, and, it does. And, and, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I say, it, yes, it does help. It does help. Okay, mm -hmm. and do you do the kids get any spiritual help for them, or do they do you offer any spiritual? Hopefully, it's Christian um, food for them, for their needs, and help them with uh, their relationship with God, of course, and help them with their life. And that's about it for now. I had one more question about if you know Bruce Hood, and 
does you do you know him personally? He he's uh, in the low rent district, I could say, and uh, he's much. Mm-hmm. He does similar, not quite similar, but close close things what you do, but more uh, outreaches. Thank you, he, uh, like feed my sheep. Thank you, Kevin. Bye. Yes, the kids have a bill of personal rights that we must uh, adhere to. We cannot force any religion on any kid, but if they come in as a Muslim, Christian, Catholic, and they uh, want to you, uh, uh, evoke their rights to go to church or go to anything where they their place of worship, we must do so. But I we see. cannot force anything on a kid. Can you encourage them to practice a certain religion and go? That's basically, we can, we can offer it, yeah. and they could say no. Okay. Like for example, in my but program, legally speaking, you can offer yes every religion under the sun. For yes, right. And for example, uh, after our becoming a man program, we always uh, get together and uh, circle up and do the Lord's prayer at the end. What but is becoming a man program? What be- is that? Becoming a man program is a is a, a program that we use for all the male residents, and we also have becoming a lady as well. Uh, that we go ahead and talk about life lessons and for the young men to understand what different traits that they need to become or to get better at to become that young man uh, that they're trying to be and to understand what they're doing right now is not becoming a man. And so when we talk about those different traits, I also have business-minded uh, folks that have been through something before, sports-related guys or even uh, entertainers that have been through their certain situations the same way and have made it in life to come talk to them, express this is what you need to go do to make it in life. So you, now let me ask you something. Mm-hmm. Do the kids listen when you speak? Yes, they do. Always, or do some tail off and trail off in terms of, uh, oh yeah, I've heard this speech before. They always listen. They uh, do. And they always listen, and sometimes I find myself playing therapist a lot because they always want to talk or have a one-on-one with me because they don't get to have that all the time. And, you know, yeah. having over 30 kids and also over 70 staff to deal with, sometimes I yeah. have to do therapy for staff as well. So, but they, they do listen, and it, uh, they get encouraged by uh, the words I have to uh, tell them. Another call. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning. I just want to say thanks to Kevin Jordan for being the guy he is. Also, I'm running for city council for District 5 in 2016. I was wondering what oh. I could do or how would I get a hold of him to work on Project What 46. is your, if you don't mind me asking, what's your name? Paul Condon. Pardon me? Paul Condon, CLN Dealing. My condo. Okay. All right. Yeah, go ahead and let him know how to get in touch with you. If uh, uh, You're running for District 5, you said? Yes, sir. South okay. Ontario's LC. Okay. If you can go to our website at www.kyjo.org and uh, under contact us, and I can make sure I get the information from there. Right. Thank you very much, brother. Keep you're doing welcome. what you're doing, bro. We need it this time. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. What does KYJO stand for? <laughs> Keeping Youth Journeying Onward. All and right. it's funny how that name uh, got uh, derived uh, because originally, like I said before, when I was going to do my real estate appraiser uh, company, I named it after my daughter, which my oldest daughter, which is her name is Kyla Jordan. So the okay. first two initials, KY, mm-hmm. and then her last uh, name, J-O. Yeah, but I noticed the K in there for Kevin, and there's a J in there for Jordan. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, so it, but it's, it really stood but, for my but daughter. But your daughter. Yeah, it's Kyla, your daughter. Yeah. Um, so yeah. later on, one of my uh, fraternity brothers came up with the name once we were uh, or dead set to get a group home. Hey, I need a name for this acronym. And he said, hey, what about keeping you from journeying on? I was like, you got it. That's yeah. it. Another call. You're a popular guy. Good morning. You're on Connect With Me. Whoops. At least you were. Well, you can call back at 436-ME-TV, option 11. Remember, be patient. Uh, we're here. We're not going anywhere until 11 o'clock, so you have time. Uh, hit option 11 and turn down the sound. Let's let's roll a piece of videotape before we go to commercial here. Let's take any one. I don't know. You want to run the graduation uh, piece here? Too late. Okay. Which one do we have? Okay. We got bulldogs right here. What are we looking at, Kevin? Uh, that's when we got the alumni last. That was last. That was last uh, uh, homecoming weekend for Bring It Home weekend. I'm also on the forefront of bringing all the alumni back together for uh, events and things uh, at Fresno State. That's great. Boy, let's keep that videotape rolling. Another call. Good morning. You're on the air. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, I have a, a nephew who's had problems. Uh, he's been getting involved in gangs and so forth, and he's been suspended from school, and now he's homeschooled. And I guess my question really is, 
how are you able to help a child like that who, you know, is not responsive to their parents, you know, won't uh, accept help from family, and yet, you know, so how, did, how does your program uh, get them away from gangs and, and into something more constructive? Well, first thing you have to do is get them out their environment. Uh, a lot of times kids grow up if just being a product of their environment. And so once they're out of that environment, then they can start working on themselves. But if they're not headstrong right now and they're still in that environment, they're going to continue and continue and continue. So that's the first thing that needs to happen. And then once they're out that environment, then they can learn different tools necessary uh, that will help them make it in life. But without that, it will not change at all unless they want to. What do you do with a kid who's given up, who doesn't care? Um, How do you make them care? You can't make them care. You just have to show them that it's more to it in life than what they think and let on. A lot of kids uh, have grown up with everybody lying to them. Yeah. Um, just and that, that distrust is so strong. So once they come here within our care and so and they see that it's people here that really care and that really that you can trust them, they open up and then they start to change. Because I always tell the kids, I'm not here to change you. Only you can change yourself. But I can help mold, uh, help mold you to that person that you want to be as far as that productive member of society that can learn how to get good grades in school, that can go ahead and know, can know how to get a job. So those are the things I teach. So if you show them that you care and that you love them and that you can help them, that will go a long way in maybe changing their mind and helping them care. Exactly. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. All because right. Because there's not enough people out there that don't. Yeah. Talking to Kevin Jordan, the executive director of KYJO, a nonprofit organization helping uh, teens that are in trouble and trying to get them back on the right track. Four three six. Me TV option 11. By the way, if you have a troubled teen, if you have a troubled grandson, uh, a nephew, a niece, call in. Ask Kevin. He's the expert. We're back in just a moment. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Samsung big screen we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Time for that upgrade to an HD 3D web-enabled Samsung TV. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Back here on the program on Connect With Me, I want to roll another piece of videotape. Let's roll the... Um, we're going to roll the bowling. Can we roll the bowling video, and we can talk about what uh, what this uh, what's this what's this event uh, uh, designed to to do? What? Uh, that's our Big Bang Weekend, building a new generation. Uh, this will be this year. We're year cup coming will be our second annual, and that's in July. That's basically creating opportunities for uh, for all my teammates and uh, st uh, teammates, and also because they don't know how to give back per se, so they get together and they'll give back with the kids of the uh, community and as well our program. And uh, also uh, with, you know, an opportunity where, you know, like a Lance Briggs or things like that, that people can be really be up close and really blow with the celebrities and meet them up close and personal. All right, good morning. You're on Connect With Me. Caller, your question? Yes, good afternoon. Uh, my question is um, that my oldest son, um, how can we get him not to cut? Not only because he's disrespecting me, but I also have a little a four-year-old um, that, you know, that he can't be listening to those words. And it's, it's like his, his uh, response is always, this is myself. You need to accept me for who I am. I said, no, that's not who you are. That's who, you know, you, unfortunately, he, raised, he was raised uh, more time with his dad and were divorced. So his father did not uh, redirect him for that. So... He's 22 years old, and he, he, he causes a lot, and that really, um, you know, bothers me. Mm. Mm. What do you think, Kevin? Well, age 22, uh, yeah, they are per se considered grown, but if they're, they are living at home, they need to learn how to respect the rules. If not, they need to know that it should be an option that they can get kicked out on the street and live on their own, honestly. That's yeah. first and Boy. foremost. Tough love, huh? Yes, and that's wow. what yeah, I'm a firm believer of tough love, and that's usually with this population and things like that's what works. 
Well, if you'd like to get a hold of Kevin, Kevin, go ahead and give the lady an, uh, one more time uh, a place where the, uh, people can get in touch with you through the website. Yes, or? you go through our website, www.kyjo.org, and under Contact Us. It'll be an email address or and a phone number. All right. I th thank uh, you. Yeah. Go ahead. A phone number. Uh, um, no, I, are you going to be giving out the number where we can um, reach him or contact him directly? Do you have an office number? Yes, or? office number. Area code 55. Okay, five. I'm, I'm sorry. But okay. it seems like my pen is not working. Uh, what's the number again? Area code 559. Uh-huh. 243. 243. 7002. 7002. Yes. Uh, yes, it's just that, um, again, he doesn't live with me. He lives with his father, but I, I okay. love him, and I do want to, you know, I want to be close to him, but it, it's like, I enjoy having him over, but then every time he's over, it's like, you know, I, uh, it's, I, I just feel like I have a stranger in my house. Yeah. So maybe, yeah. um, I don't know, I, he, you know, lately he's been going to church, so hopefully he'll get the message, okay. um, you know, from God, and, um, but if not, I will definitely would like to get a hold of him. Uh, he uh, has a lot of, he has respect for, uh, right. you know, for, uh, right. for people so that he will listen to um, someone uh, Ma'am, my heart goes out to you. I hope hope you get it turned around. Give Kevin a call at the office. We're running short on time, only a couple of more minutes. I appreciate the phone call. Let's run. Well, I think we have one uh, one more videotape we can run. I think we have time for one more. Whichever one it is, it's fine. Kevin, at, that's a tough one because you believe in tough love. And, yes. and um, you know, 22 years old, they're already an adult. You yeah, know, what do you and do? It's, it's, it's funny, but the foster care is extended to 21 right now. Uh, yeah. And it's going ap yeah. approaching all the way to 24. So, can you, you know, speak to this video right here? What are we looking at here? The well, graduation? Yes, that's Al Alvaro. He graduated. Another former resident. He graduated from, from Bullard High School. Mm -hmm. uh, Alvaro. He was the first resident to receive an academic scholarship to uh, attend college, and it's, now he's attending Hill College, and also in our AB12 housing. Uh, this is uh, one of our many activities that we do out at um, camping. At uh, Miller Lake, uh, Miller Millerton Lake, right? And, uh, jet skiing and all those things. So a lot of because uh, I love to expose the kids to different things in life than just what per se they know this is street. You know, once they are exposed to these other things in life, then they'll start understanding like, okay, it's more to it than life, and I want to start wanting to do these things that I did at Kaijo than uh, what I did back at home. How do you know your system works? Uh, just uh, the, how I know it works because the kids. They tell me when we survey the kids and they tell us what programs and when they say that uh, I had a lot more success at this program than I had at other programs, that's how we know. Let me ask you kind of a dumb question. Do they respect you more because you're an athlete? I don't necessarily come off saying I'm an athlete. At, at, I mean, they'll know you eventually well, later on. thought just kind of crossed my mind and said, well, maybe they look up to you more because you played at Fresno State or maybe you played it with the Packers. Or and I've whatever. even had, because, uh, you know, I also uh, have a work program with the current Fresno State uh, yeah. football players. Yeah. And they come and work and they get disrespected. So I don't think. Really? They oh, yeah. They do? Yeah. So they, <laughs> my goodness. So, so, they, well, <laughs> so if Derek Carr showed up. Say, oh, you're Derek Carr, so what? Get out of here. I don't want to hear. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> it, it, respect comes with respect, you know, and then just. So it doesn't matter who you are, but they if, have to. Sh they, they don't care, I guess, is what you're saying. They want, if they want somebody, if you can relate with them and really talk, uh, understand what they're going through. That's, that's what, what matters to them. Yes. Huh? They don't care who the person is. They just want somebody that can relate to with them. them. Yes. we got to wrap it up. We're not going to solve this problem today. We Certainly are, not on hey, your show, I'll, but you're helping. Hey, I'll come back. Not a problem. I thank you very thank much. You, All right. Kevin Jordan. Our thanks to him and his time today. Executive Director of KYJO, a nonprofit organization helping teens here in the Central Valley. Glad he came along. A great thing. Tomorrow, hey, the Academy Awards. We'll talk about them with Becky Cinema. Back tomorrow. Have a good day. Thank you. Want to create something extraordinary?
create perfection. Our lifestyle appliances make it easy. KitchenAid, Ventura TV Appliance, and you, when only the best will do. Want more of me? Me? Go to MeTVFresno.com for schedules, information on your favorite shows, videos, pictures, and more. Go to MeTVFresno.com today. Exclusively brought to you by Ventura TV.